Well, good morning and welcome to the program. I'm D-Dog here, your host, so glad you could join me. Today I'm on location in Discovery Bay and our special guest is the pastor of DBICC, Danny Cullens. Danny, thank you for joining us today. It's good to be with you today, D-Dog. I appreciate you having me on your program. Well, uh, it's been a wild ride lately and so uh, several questions I'd like to ask you. What is the next big thing for DBICC? That's a great question, actually. What's the next big thing? Uh, ironically, the next big thing for us is to go back to where we were like two years ago, to go back to having services at Discovery College. Okay. And uh, the irony is, two years ago, that would have been just a ho-hum day, another Sunday at Discovery College. Right. Because we've been away for so long and having to do different things, going back is like a huge comfort for us. So. Yeah, that's the next big thing for us. I get it. Okay, so 
going back to the old way is the new thing. I can see that. Well, here's the second question for you. What has your church learned over the last uh, year and a half or so? Ah, so what have we learned? I can tell you, I would say three things that we've learned and then one thing that we've been reminded of. Um, so first of all, very clearly, we've learned that church is not a building. And so we've had to move around and do things even online or from home. And so it's been very clear that church is much more than a building. Um, now, a building helps. In fact, we've seen when we have had a building, it makes things easier, a much easier ministry option whenever you have uh, a facility or platform. But you don't have to have that, actually, to, to do the ministry of church. So that's been one thing that we've learned. Another one's creativity. We've had to be creative because uh, the old options weren't on the table. And so we had to come up with new ways of doing things. And so uh, we, we began these guard groups, which have been an amazing success. People connecting and helping each other, walking together through life together. It's been wonderful. So guard groups have been good. Our worship tech uh, we've been able to introduce some new things because we weren't going every single week. We were able to kind of pull back and improve some of our infrastructure, add some new things. So that was really good. Obviously, uh, we've learned how to do kids camp a different way. We're doing that this week. Um, and so kids camp, we had to do online. We had to do a home version, small version. So, um, you know, we've had to be creative and find some new ways of doing old things. And that's good for you. You know, think outside the box. Um, <clears throat> we've also learned about some of our strengths and weaknesses, I would say. Uh, so some of our strengths, you know, our relationships. We, we've seen so clearly that in our church there's a lot of people with really deep relationships. And so they've been able to survive, obviously, even in this uh, tumultuous time. And so we're thankful for the strength of relationships. Uh, we've also had the strength become very clear that we're flexible. And so people have been super gracious and patient with all the different ways we've been trying to do church. And so we're a flexible church. That's a strength for us as well. And then another strength that we've developed is online services, where before we had very little in the way of video. Now we do it every single week and it's available for people you know, around the world if they want. And so now we have that. Some weaknesses that we've also discovered though is that our communication and our network connection of some people is not as good as we would like for it to be. Unfortunately, in this time, there were some people who are on the edges and we haven't done a great job of keeping in touch and helping them feel included and involved and in knowing what's going on. And so uh, it has, hasn't been without difficulty. There have been some things we've learned the hard way in this time, some, some weaknesses that we have. But then uh, we've also learned and been reminded of a couple of things as well. One is God's faithfulness. So even when it looks like the world's going to end, you know, and everything that we've ever done is going to stop and things are going to change, we've seen him just continue to provide for us individually and obviously as a church as well. God's provided, has been taking care of us. And so we've seen God's faithfulness. And then we've seen the power of prayer. Um, so many different prayer movements have happened, some just kind of on their own, some that we've done as a church. And out of that, we've seen so many benefits. And so... Uh, it's been fun for us to be reminded of the power and the importance of prayer. So yeah, those are three things I'd say we've learned and some things we've been reminded of. I see. Okay, makes sense. So you've learned a lot, haven't you? Well, another question for you. What are your hopes for DBICC going forward? What are my hopes? Well, I would say my number one hope for DBICC is a spiritual awakening. Just for our eyes to be open to really what God is doing, to what's happening at the spiritual level, not just the physical level. Uh, there have been so many physical distractions and so many things in the world that are calling out for our attention over the last months. And I think it's easy for us to kind of tune out and disconnect from what's God doing, what's His heart, what are His plans. And so my hope is that we can have an awakening, each of us, a walk with God that's fresh and new and moving forward. Um, and then prayer would be a, a, a huge piece of that for all of us to just come back to talking with God. And so seeing the importance of the spiritual realm and in, engaging in that as well. So a spiritual awakening. You know, when Jesus um, was about to leave, he was about to be uh, uh, executed on the cross. Uh, he was with his disciples at the Last Supper. And he prays what's called the high priestly prayer. And here's a piece from that. John 17, starting in verse 14, it says this. I have given them your word, 
and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. I, I pray for that. I hope that we can be different. Verse 15, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Protect them. Verse 16, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. So there's being different and being okay with that. And then verse 17, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. And so my heart and my prayer is that there can be this awakening and uh, this understanding from God's perspective what's true and what's not true, what's a lie, and that we cannot be caught up in the things of the world, but really interested more in the things of the Spirit. Um, and so that, and another thing I would say that my, I hope for is that we would appreciate what we have. You know, even like we said, going back to D.C., um, it's a privilege to have that. The things that we have in children's ministry, worship ministry, whatever, we're very blessed to have these things. And so that we would appreciate as a church what we do have and uh, enjoy that and not just wish away um, thinking about something else. Uh, another thing I would say I hope for is re-engagement. As we get back into meeting in more of a, what we would call a normal way, the people will re-engage. They're going to help with children's ministry. They're going to help with youth ministry and worship ministry and whatever else setting up, tearing down, not just so that we can get it done, but so that lives can be touched, that hearts can be touched, that people's lives can be changed because of the ministry of our church. And we know that all these different uh, pieces play a part in the bigger picture of helping lives be changed. So the people will re-engage with a heart to serve for the glory of God, for the, for the church to be strong, for people to be reached for Him. So people will re-engage, I would say, is another important thing. And then uh, finally, just impact. And we won't just do church just to have church, but that people really will be changed. That lives will be different because of what God is doing in us and in them. And so, um, you know, we're going to plant the seeds, we'll water the seeds, but God is the one that brings the harvest. And so, that, again, come back to prayer. We're praying, God, do your thing. We've done all this work. We've been talking to people. We've been ministering to them. But you have to be the one that works in their heart. So our prayer is uh, that God would bring a harvest in our lives and in Discovery Bay. Very nice. Okay. Well, last question. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Well, I do want to say that I truly believe that our best days are ahead of us as a church. I truly believe that. And I want to encourage people, let's join God in what He is doing. Um, can I pray for us? Father, I thank You for this season that we've been through, we thank you for what you still have ahead for us. Lord, I pray that you'll help us just to stay in touch with you, to keep our, our eyes, our minds in tune with you. Lord, open our eyes to things that we haven't seen before, things that you want us to see, want us to know. Lord, I pray that you'll open our hearts, soften our hearts to the changes you want to make in us and around us. Or maybe you want to do something different in how we minister, how we serve people as a church, how we impact Discovery Bay. So I pray that you'll soften our hearts to that. I uh, pray that you provide what's needed. I thank you as you have in the past. Lord, we believe that you will going forward continue to provide uh, the resources, the people, the ideas, the creativity, all of it for what you want to do. So, Father, we thank you for our church and thank you for this incredible season that we're in. May we seize the day. May we make the most of it. And we look forward to what you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for joining us. We hope to see you soon. Thank you for having me.